So let's say this is the water level. And we have a square plate, a square vertical plate. Now let's say it's two meters below the surface. And the side length of the plate is two meters. How can we determine the hydrostatic force on this vertical plate submerged in water? Well, the first thing I would recommend doing is determining the x and y axis. So I'm going to assign the water level the x axis. And so this is going to be the y axis. Now, the formula that you need to use is this equation. So the fluid force, or the hydrostatic force, is going to be the weight density of water times the integral from C to D along the y-axis of H of y, this represents the depth of water below the surface, times L of y, this represents the length of the plate along the x-direction, dy. Now the first thing you need to determine is the weight density w. And look at the units that we're dealing with. The depth is in meters. So therefore the weight density that we need to use is going to be 9800 newtons per cubic meter. Now let's say if the units that you saw here was in feet, then you should use this number for the weight density, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Now some textbooks may use 62.5 so you can just go with whatever your textbook is using. Now we need to determine h of y and l of y. So let's say if we focus on this portion of the vertical plate it's going to be y units below the surface and so that's the depth. For the most part, h of y is almost always negative y. Now, l of y represents the length of the plate along the x direction, and l of y is constant. Because we're dealing with a square plate, it's going to be 2 meters. This side and this side has to be the same. So l of y is simply 2. So for this problem, f is going to be 9800 times the integral from c to d. Now what do you think the values of c and d are? So this point here, let me use a different color, that's c and this is d. So c is negative 4, d is negative 2. So we're going to integrate it from negative 4 to negative 2. And then h of y is negative y, l of y is 2. So it's 9800 times the definite integral from negative 4 to negative 2 of negative 2y dy. So the antiderivative of negative 2y is negative 2y squared over 2 times 9800, evaluated from negative 4 to negative 2. So we can cancel the 2. And so this is going to be negative 9,800 times y squared, evaluated from negative 4 to negative 2. So first, let's plug in negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. And then if we plug in negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16. So it's negative 9,800 times 4 minus 16, which is negative 12. And so the final answer is going to be 117,600 newtons. The final answer is going to be a force. So if you use 9,800 newtons per cubic meter, the final answer will be in newtons. If you use 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, the final answer will be in pounds. Now let's work on another problem. So let's say this is the surface of water and we have a triangular plate. So this is a right triangle and it's three meters below the surface of water. This side is nine meters tall and the base of the triangle is six meters long. 
So go ahead and determine the hydrostatic force acting on this triangular vertical plate. So the first thing we need to do is determine h of y. Just like before, h of y is simply going to be negative y. We're going to call this the x-axis, the water level, and this is going to be the y-axis. So we need to determine C and D. This is C and this is D. So notice that point C is 12 meters deep. 3 plus 9 is 12. So this is at negative 12. And this position is at negative 3 along the y-axis. Now because the units is in meters, the weight density that we're going to use, once again, is going to be 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. Now the next thing we need to do is write a function for L of y. L of y doesn't equal 6 because the length of the plate, it changes based on the depth of water. So for instance, when y is equal to negative 3, L is 0. At this point, there's no value for L. But when y is negative 12, L is 6. So with this information, how can we write a function that relates L to Y? So first, we need to determine the slope. If you go back to algebra, if you're given two points, X and Y, let's say X1, Y1, X2, Y2, you can find the equation of the line that passes through those two points. But first, you need to determine the slope, which is the change in L divided by the change in Y which is L2 minus L1, so you can say 6 minus 0, divided by Y2 minus Y1, negative 12 minus negative 3. So this is going to be 6, and then we have negative 12 plus 3, which is negative 9. And so we could reduce that to negative 2 over 3. Now you've seen this form, the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. And so for this example, it's going to be L is equal to MY plus b since l is a function of y. Now the slope is negative 2 over 3. So we need to determine the y-intercept b. Or in this case, maybe you can call it the l-intercept. So let's use this point. When l is 6, y is negative 12. Negative 2 times negative 12 is 24. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. And 6 minus 8 is negative 2. So b is negative 2. So l of y is going to be negative 2 thirds y minus 2. So now we could find a force, but let's write the formula first. So it's going to be the weight density of water times the definite integral from C to D, L of Y times H of Y dy. So W once again is 9800, C is negative 12, D is negative 3, L of Y is negative 2 thirds Y minus 2, and then H of Y is just negative Y. So now let's distribute negative y. So the fluid force is going to be 9,800 and then negative 2 thirds y times negative y. That's negative 2 over 3 y squared and then plus 2y. So go ahead and type this into your graphing calculator. This is going to be positive 2 thirds y squared. The two negative signs will cancel. And so you should get 
400 newtons. So that's the hydrostatic force on a triangular vertical plate. That's the answer for this problem. Let's work on another problem. So this time, we're going to have a trapezoid that is just below the surface of water. And it's 12 feet on the top side. And the bottom base of the trapezoid is 20 feet long. And let's say the height of the trapezoid is 8 feet. So feel free to pause the video and calculate the hydrostatic force on this vertical trapezoidal plate. So once again, we're going to choose this as the x-axis and this part as the y-axis. So h of y is going to be negative y, as always. And c and d, we're going to integrate it from negative 8 to 0. Now we need to determine L of y. So notice that when y is 0, the length of the trapezoid is 12. And when y is negative 8, L is 20. So go ahead and write a function for L in terms of y. So first, let's calculate the slope. The change in L divided by the change in y. So L2 minus L1, that's going to be 20 minus 12 over y2 minus y1, so negative 8 minus 0. So this is 8 over negative 8, so the slope is 1. Now using this equation, L equals my plus b, we need to determine the L in this app. So when L is 12, m is negative 1, and y is 0. So we could see that b is 12. So therefore, we have this expression for L of y. It's going to be negative 1y, or just negative y, plus 12. Using the formula, L equals my plus b. So far, we have h of y and l of y. The only thing we're missing is w. Now, the units are in feet as opposed to meters. So we're going to use 62.4 pounds per cubic foot for the weight density of water. So now let's calculate the fluid force using this equation. So the weight density is 62.4, C is negative 8, D is 0, L of Y is negative Y plus 12, and H of Y is negative Y. So let's begin by distributing negative Y. So negative Y times negative Y, that's going to be positive Y squared. And then 12 times negative y, that's just negative 12y. So go ahead and type that expression into your calculator. And let's see what answer this will give us. So this is going to be 34,611. And the units won't be in newtons this time. It's going to be in pounds. And so this is the answer for the problem. So that's the hydrostatic force on the trapezoid, the vertical trapezoid. Let's work on one more problem. So this time, we're going to deal with a semicircle. And we're going to say that the base of the semicircle is 20 meters in diameter. Go ahead and determine the hydrostatic force acting on the semicircle. So we're going to say this is the x-axis, and I'm going to put the y-axis right in the middle this time. 
So we can see that the radius of the semicircle is 10. So this is 10 meters, this is 10. Well, that's a negative 10 if we make this the origin. And so this will be negative 10 along the y-axis. And this is 0. Now, because this is in meters, the weight density is going to be 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. H of y is going to be negative y. Now, we need to determine L of y. So what can we say about the length of this plate? Well, we know this side is x, and this side is x. And this is L. So we can say that L is 2x. But we need to get L as a function of y and not x. How can we do so? So a semicircle is pretty much related to a circle. And the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We can see that the radius is 10. So r is 10. So 10 squared is 100. Now solving for x squared, we need to subtract both sides by y squared. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we can see that x is the square root of 100 minus y squared. So we can take this and substitute it into that equation. So we can say that L of y is going to be 2 times the square root of 100 minus y squared. So now we can write the expression that's going to give us the fluid force on this semicircular vertical plate. So it's going to be the weight density times the definite integral from c to d, and then L of y times h of y dy. So we said the weight density is 9,800. And c is going to be negative 10. We're going to integrate it up to d, which is 0. And then h of y is negative y. And then l of y is 2 times this thing. And so if you type this into your calculator, this will give you 6,533,333 newtons. So that's the hydrostatic fluid force on this semicircular plate. So that's the answer. Now let's talk about some other things that you need to know for this type of topic. Pressure is basically defined as force divided by area. And when dealing with water on a surface, we're dealing with the weight force. The weight force is mg. This is not the same as the weight density. The weight density is going to be the weight force divided by the volume. And so mass divided by volume is density, which is rho. Don't confuse it with capital P, which is pressure. So the weight density is basically the density of water times the gravitational acceleration. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so the weight density, you end up getting 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. Now, if you want to make sense of the units, it's important to understand that force is mass times acceleration. Mass is typically measured in kilograms. Acceleration is meters per second squared. And the force is the newton. So you can replace kilograms times meters per second squared with the newton. And we have cubic meters on the bottom. So that's where you can get the weight density of water in newtons per cubic meter. Now, another way to get the weight density in pounds per cubic feet is you can start with this. 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, we need to convert kilograms to pounds. So how can we do that? If you need to find the conversion, just go to Google and type in kilograms to pounds. And it should give you that one kilogram is 2.20462 pounds. And then for the conversion for meters to feet, one meter is 3.28084 feet. 
Now we need to raise this to the third power. So we could cancel cubic meters. And we can also cancel kilograms. So this is going to give us pounds per cubic feet. So it's 1,000 times 2.20462 divided by 3.28084 raised to the third power. And this should give you 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. So this is the weight density of water in that unit.